Hey, hello friends. Welcome back to Thursday Thoughts with Rito. It's your boy Rito. I'm glad you're here. Hey, have you ever wondered why on earth God turned Lot's wife into a pillar of salt? Well, I have two. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to answer the specific question of why God chose salt. Um, that That's a bit of a mystery still, but I wonder if I can shed a little bit of light on what led to that severe punishment, uh, especially when Lot, who um, was himself not a terribly righteous dude in that whole encounter, uh, when he was trying to protect the angelic visitors, he tried to offer his uh, virgin daughters to a mob that did not have good intentions, but God protected them all. And then the angels practically had to pry Lot out of Sodom uh, with his family uh, to get going. But the Bible says, it's in Genesis 19, 26, as they're going, and they had been given strict instructions not to look back. Uh, Lot's wife was already kind of lollygagging behind them, and it says that she turned and looked. And now, the Hebrew word here is not just like a casual glance over the shoulder, like, oh, snap, there's fire and brimstone literally raining from the sky. No, <laughs> it's uh, it's more of a, she was longing. She was looking and considering missing her old way of life. And presumably, uh, she had grown up in Sodom, and that's where Lot had met her and married her, and she was having a hard time leaving behind her old way of life. And so in that moment, God turned her into a pillar of salt. And I don't really understand why that punishment, but um, that's that's what happened. And I believe that is why, because she was so focused on what she was losing that she was missing what God was leading her too. Now, there is an old Hebrew legend that uh, Lot's wife is the reason that the Dead Sea, this all happened right around the region of the Dead Sea, uh, why the Dead Sea is so salty and why there's no life that can live in that uh, that body of water. Uh, I don't know if that's true or not, but it sure is interesting uh, that when we don't follow God, uh, there's no life. So anyway, at this point, it might be really tempting for some to want me to lean into the sins of Sodom and why God brought judgment on that city, but I think that's the easy way out. I think with everything, God always brings it back to us. And you and I, our lives before Jesus were just as guilty uh, as anything that happened in Sodom or Gomorrah. We were just as uh, deserving of blame before a holy God as anyone else. And when we come to Jesus, we are made new. The old is gone, the new has come. But I wonder if any of us are ever looking over our shoulder a little bit, looking back kind of longingly at our old way of life before Jesus. I hope not. I hope I don't. Um, because you know what? We won't be able to bring any piece of that with us into eternity with Jesus. It's all going to be taken. And that's what should happen to it. So anyway, all that to say, my friends, this day, walk in the light of Jesus. Look at the light. Look to the light. Keep walking toward the light. Don't look back. And be the light to the world around you while you're at it. Thank you for joining me today, friends. God bless you all.